I am absolutely in love with Spain. And I'm not sure, is it the flamenco? Is it the people? Is it the food? I love all of it. It gets me so excited. And you're definitely going to see that on today's show. I'm going to start by making a cold tomato soup called salmorejo. And then I'm going to cook with my student, Joan. And together, we're going to make this fabulous lamb stew with chorizo and white beans and tomatoes. It's so fabulous. And I cannot wait to cook that with you today. You guys could have laughed at that. <laughs> so chorizo is a pork and garlic sausage and it's got a lot of flavor. I like to use this one because it holds together. If you use the really soft one, it's going to fall apart. So I like this because it holds together. This size okay? Yeah, that's excellent. Okay. So you can see how this one mm -hmm. is really um, just stays in one piece. You can Most add all of that and then can stir it. So imagine the flavor that that chorizo is going to give. And then you've got the wonderful texture of those kind of creamy beans. It'll be really, really good. So bring the lamb up from the bottom. Mm -hmm. And I can see that it probably needs a little bit more liquid. So we'll just add a little bit of water. Now what's great about this is you add the water, bring it up to a boil, turn it down, let it simmer again, and it cooks for, in about 40 minutes, it'll be done. The lamb will be tender, and you've got this fabulous sauce. It's kind of thickened from that um, wonderful juices from the lamb, and mm, it's it really on. great. It's mostly to cover all the beans, yeah. Yes. When I was in Spain, I had this fabulous oil. It was kind of a scented oil that was scented with pimenton and paprika drizzled on the top, so I thought it would be fun to make that. What you can do is take about three tablespoons and put it into that pan. How do you measure three tablespoons just by Perfect. looking at it? Okay. <laughs> well, I kind of go, I just kind of eyeball. Okay. okay, we're going to add a half of a teaspoon of this smell. Mm. It smells good. Smoky. Smoky. Yeah. This is pimenton. Pimenton is a smoked paprika. That'll give a lot of flavor, so a half teaspoon of that. I love pimenton, but you know, you don't want to use too much. Is that enough? Yes. And that okay. oil's warm, so it kind of sizzles. And now you can add a teaspoon a of teaspoon. paprika. And that's a sweet paprika, not hot. I don't think that the, I think you'll have to use this because Double that won't this. fit into the. Okay. So I do two of these. Yes. Okay. With the olive oil, you're really just warming that olive oil and you'll have really nice flavor. I like the oil. I think it's interesting. I would do it with other spices. I think that if you warm olive oil and you add some herbs to it, it takes on the flavor of those herbs or spices or whatever. It really is a wonderful garnish into something, whether it's a soup. You know, sometimes I'll make a cauliflower soup and I'll do a coriander oil. It just takes it to a whole other level. Okay, while I serve the stew, do you want to get some wine? I'll get it. Okay, perfect. I have a fantastic Tempranillo from the Rioja region of Spain, and it'll be really delicious with the lamb and the beans and the tomatoes. And this is also from the north of Spain? Yes, wine? it's from yes. the Rioja, the northern yeah. part. So I'm going to drizzle a little bit on yours. Thank you. And a little on mine. Ooh, it smells so mm -hmm. good. It's got that smoky smell to it. Mm. This two that I just tasted was one of the most delicious things I've ever eaten, actually. I was like being in, on a Sunday with your grandma and eating a beautiful meal on a beautiful day. The chorizo is incredible. Mm. Oh. Mm. Ooh, that sounds good, huh? Yeah. There you go. All right, thanks. Mm. Wow, that's crunchy. Not good. Mm hmm. I think the salmon plays off the onion really well. It's really easy, too. Can I have another bite? Yeah, of course. You can eat the whole thing. Mm. Mm. Wow.
good, right? Very good. Good eat the rest. <laughs> I'll take it with me. <laughs> this is my student, Jeff. And you probably recognize him because he's been on the show before. And I love having him as my student. Really, really fun. So we were tasting the uh, lavash pizza. What do you think? I, I like it a lot. Would you make it? Oh, yeah, definitely. It looks easy and simple, and, and I don't think I can mess it up that easily. <laughs> All right. What we're going to do now is we're going to do some turkey cutlets. Really delicious. So let's get started. Right. Why don't you grind some pepper in there? How, mu how much? That's probably good. And then I'm going to add a little bit of salt. All right, so this can kind of be mixed up. You can do that with your hands if yeah. you don't mind. Oh, not at all. This is the fun part. Well, that's the great part about cooking, right? Yeah, hands on. All right, so next what you're going to do is crack some eggs into this bowl. And I find it's easier if you crack it against the counter as opposed to the edge of the bowl. You can try whatever at home, but that for me is just a little bit easier. Four eggs will be good. All right. I'll be a pro by the end of this. You drink, you've made scrambled eggs, I can tell. Yes, I have. I'm actually, I'm in charge of breakfast. My girlfriend cooks the rest. I'm her okay. sous chef. Okay, uh, I see. So. I'll give a pinch of salt. So why do you add salt and pepper to, to everything? The ingredients are very neutral. And what you're doing really is to season that turkey. And if you don't, it's going to be a little bit flat. You're going to say, mm, this is good. But if you put a little salt and pepper, it brings out the flavor, and you're going to go, yum, that's okay. delicious. It's kind of amazing. Um, I've, I've seasoned. Uh, the, the, the ingredients piece by piece, but it's really good to hear why you do it, and especially because the three textures are so different and you really do just coat the flavor on there. We have right. a really nice big chunk of Parmigiano Reggiano. I just use a fine grater and we're gonna grate about a half of a cup of Parmigiano Reggiano right into the bowl. So if you grate it right into the bowl with the panko, it's really easy. I think you're good now. All yeah, right, that I like looks that ratio. better. <laughs> what we're gonna do next is add some oregano. So smell this oregano, it's so nice. You know wow. the best way? Really rub your fingers on it. It's really wow. good. Wear that as a cologne. <laughs> All right, so what you're gonna do, take this, and I always pull in the opposite direction, like this, to remove all the leaves. And then when it's tender at the top like this, you can just throw that in. All right, what we can do now is to chop that. That looks good. Try chopping, kind of keeping your knife parallel. I think you have a lot Perfect. of control if you keep it like this. Just wow. try it and see what's comfortable for you. Okay, so but I am I, allowed to put my other hand on the top? Absolutely, you should. And it just depends upon where you're comfortable. Some people put it right here on the palm. Some people put it on their fingertips. So I tend to, let me see. I don't even know what I do. I, yes, I do just what you do. I okay. do there. But some people like this. I find I have more control this way. But I say whatever you're comfortable with, really, it doesn't matter. But I try to kind of keep the knife parallel. I find you have a more consistent cut rather okay. than fanning too much, but you're doing a great job. Fanning, Excellent. like, which is what I was just yeah. doing on this one. But if you keep it sort of parallel, you'll see it's more consistent. Excellent. I definitely fan it. I'm not used to doing it that way. Um, I, I've noticed that when I do fan it, though, it kind of just goes all over the cutting board. So knowing, knowing that Joanne does it a certain way and understanding why she does a certain way at least gives me a chance to check it out and see if that's something that helps me keep control of whatever I am dicing. The thing that's great about Jeff's knife skills, you know, I worked with him a couple of years ago on the show and he has really improved. And I, I also, I love his enthusiasm and excitement and, you know, he's truly genuinely interested in cooking. And, um, you know, when you see him chop and he's doing really well, he's doing well. I'm proud of him, you know? Now you can add that. So good. What do you think is in that? Can you guess? I taste bell pepper. Mm -hmm. Roasted red peppers, right? I think I taste parsley, but I'm not positive. Yep, parsley. Okay. And there's a spice. There is, let's see. Begins with C. Cumin. Good job. Is she good or what? This is my student, Stella, and she's here to cook with me. We are going to have so much fun in today's cooking class. Yes, we are. <laughs> we are. So that was a crostini. Now we're going to be making some roasted Cornish game hens. So we're going to kind of make a stuffing. Okay. We're going to start. Look at this mixture of wild mushrooms that we have. Wow. Start with the chanterelles. Take your small knife, okay. and we're going to trim these a little. They're really pretty clean, but if they have, if they're damaged like this, you right. can just cut that off. Okay. And then I can see right here, there's a little bit that can be cut off. Do you want to do that one? Sure. 
So I just cut off the damaged parts. There's okay. one end. Do you want to do that sure, end? Sure, I would love to. I like to give you some jobs to do. <laughs> okay. And I like to take the jobs. <laughs> What's your favorite thing to make, Stella? Um, I love to make uh, probably uh, pasta with Swiss chard and an egg on top. Okay. It's probably my favorite. Wow. When I come visit you, you're going to have to make that for me. I will. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. No one ever cooks for me. I would love that. <laughs> all right. So what we can do is let's get all of them ready, and then we're going to okay. chop. These look pretty good. Maybe we just trim the stems a little like that. Now, do these, do you have to scrub these too? Do you have if to... they're dirty, yes, you can take that damp towel and wash those right. off too. Just okay. brush them off, I should say. And then we have all of these. Right, now how would you cut Oops. these? Um, these, we're gonna chop just like the other ones. I know they look okay. kind of like they're out of some <laughs> scary movie. All right, what we'll do first with these cremini mushrooms, that's these, okay. we're gonna cut these into slices, just coarsely. Okay. Okay. How's that going? Now, if some of these pieces are bigger, do we want... To, you can cut them do down, do or if these are already chopped, let's just set those aside. Side and then do and these. And do those, yes. Okay. Those kind of broke apart really fast. They did. Those are the easy mushrooms. How are yours going? Mine are. Want to try a bigger good. knife? See um, how it works? Sure. Or do you like this one? Uh, that one's fine, but I'll try, try a this. bigger one. Try it. No. Keep the tip of your knife down okay. and lift it really high. Yes. Good. It actually cuts through a lot. It's, Does that feel comfortable it, to you? Yeah. Okay. Good. I think Stella could do whatever she wants. I think she could be a doctor, she could be an attorney. And cooks are really smart, too. She could be a cook as well. OK. Next, what we're going to do is we'll take a little bit of butter, and we're going to put, the, put it into this pan that's been heated. Okay. And now I've got another thing for you to guess. It's really a quiz. It's just like school. You think you have time off, but no. Perfect. OK, rub your fingers like this. Tell me what that herb is. Do you know? Um, I, I want to guess that it's thyme. It is thyme. Okay. You are right. It smells good. It That's a good way to smell and see if you can, you know, to figure out what an herb is. It's really to rub your fingers on it, smell your fingers, and you can really smell that herb. To make the bauna cauda, you start with anchovies. and. I love these salt pack anchovies. You can see there's a lot of salt on the top. And what I do is I take eight of these anchovies and place them in a bowl of water. I take off a little bit of the salt, like that. There's eight. Now you're going to fillet them. This is the fun part. So you pick up the anchovy, and then you can open it up like this. And you can see there's the bone on the inside. Just remove that and discard it. And if you see there's some excess bones on the edges, you feel them, you can just remove those and just discard them. If there's tiny little bones on the edges, that's okay. All right, this is the last one. Now what you want to do is just to remove all of the anchovies. <laughs> And we'll put those in a bowl of clean water. And then we'll let those sit for about five or 10 minutes. Now we're going to add some butter to the pan. And I use a saucepan for this and some unsalted butter. Remember that the anchovies have a little bit of saltiness to them. So you're not going to need to add any salt to this. Remember, it's just those four ingredients. And then we also have lots of chopped garlic. When your butter has melted, just add the garlic right to the butter. You don't want the garlic to take on any color. You want it to stay nice and soft. And you're going to cook this for about 10 minutes, so you want to watch it and turn it down so that your garlic doesn't turn golden. Every once in a while, it's a good idea to stir it. So let's talk about anchovies for a few minutes. These are probably the most difficult to find. And then we also have 
these two. These are also packed. Both of these are packed just in a brine or olive oil. These are probably the most common. These are the flat fillets. Very, very easy to use. But if you only use two, then you're gonna have lots left over in the can and it's, you kind of think, what am I gonna do with that? So I, I like these, but I tend to buy these in the jar for convenience because you can take the top on and off, use as many as you want, but they're pretty much the same. Next, what I want to do is I want to mash the anchovies and they've now soaked for 10 minutes. So we'll remove them from the water. I like to lay them out on paper towels so that I really dry them. This is important. You're not adding all of that liquid. So it's kind of like sending them to the beach. It's anchovy beach. Take another paper towel and I just place it right on the top to dry them. All right, now that they're done, you can remove them. These are nice and dry. You want a nice anchovy paste for this. Take a fork and just mash them. You can see that's pretty fast. The bigger the fork, the easier it is to do. The most interesting thing about Banya Cauda is when you eat it, it really doesn't have a strong anchovy flavor. The anchovies really add some nice salt to it and really body to the Banya Cauda. And see how I use my finger on the tines of the fork because it gives me more leverage in terms of mashing. The garlic is now cooked for 10 minutes, so, and it doesn't have any color. That's very important. So you add your anchovies, and I'm also adding olive oil. It's a good amount of olive oil. I just stir this together. You know, this is one of those dishes, it might look so strange, but when you make it, it is so irresistible. You are going to be craving banya cauda. And this cooks for about 30 minutes. It isn't like you'd eat banya cauda every single day, but it's one of those things that you just dip your vegetables in. It isn't like you take a spoon and, you know, spoon it into your mouth. So it just flavors the vegetables, and it's just such a special thing. I love it. I'm just cutting some zucchini for the banya cauda, but we have some carrots and cherry tomatoes and green onions and mushrooms. And I love the platter to look really bountiful. So I really fill it up with all these really beautiful vegetables. And you know, I know that for sure, the fennel is the first thing I'm gonna taste because I love it. All right, I know that our banya cauda is finished and you want to make sure that it stays nice and warm. So you wanna take it directly from the stove, put it right in the bowl and serve it right away. And now we get to all those goodies that are on the bottom. Some have kind of dissolved a little bit. I am so ready to taste this. It's good, isn't it's it? It's really good. Yeah. I'm glad you like it. Thank you, all right. You ready to cook with me? Yes, I am. Oh, good. This is my student, Reggie, and we are gonna cook some fantastic food from Italy today. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. Private cooking class for you. I'm excited about okay, that. Okay, good, okay. come on. All right. So what we're gonna do is you can take a chicken thigh, Okay. grab one up there, and right. if there's a lot of fat, you can remove that. So like this, I just remove it. Okay. It's like from the this, edge, yeah. exactly. We're just slicing it up like this? Yeah, yeah, into one inch pieces. Okay. So what you can do is, usually I take the fat off with, um, I take the fat off with a small knife, and then, and then I use a big knife to cut it into one inch pieces. Okay. So you sort of want some nice big chunks of chicken in this. Now, for a healthier choice, could you use chicken breast and it'd be just as flavorful? Uh, you could use chicken breast. It tends to be a little bit drier, which is why I like to use the thigh. Okay. But you could absolutely use the chicken. You could use the breast. Okay. I like teaching. I like when someone's next to me cooking. I, I have to say, though, it does slow me up because I'm dying to do everything. I want to do the chopping. I want to, you know, I want to chop the herbs. I want to chop the garlic. I want to cut the onions. I want to do all of it. But it also shows me what people know and what they don't know and the things that I take for granted. And I love being side by side with someone and I feel lucky that I can share that with people. What we're gonna do is put a little bit of olive oil